Welcome to the Birth Launch Podcast, an empowering space for expecting and new parents to hear candid conversations with experts and learn how to craft your ideal birth. Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Birth Launch Podcast. I'm so excited to be joined by my good friends, Sarah and Laura from Dynamic Doulas. You guys, the three of us are such a trio. And every time we get <laughs> together, I just feel like we are such a powerhouse of like humor and realness. And we're going to shoot you straight. And today that's really exactly what we're going to do. So Sarah, Laura, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks we're for having super us. Super excited to be here. What I want to talk about today is much more casual than what we typically talk about on the show, but I would love for us to just have a very raw, honest, transparent, candid conversation about the things that we have learned being doulas. What are the things, the nitty gritty, the bad, the good, the ugly, all of it that clients, patients, pregnant people, birthing people are really not going to hear anywhere else? I mean, the main thing I'm thinking about is that there's just no way your partner can be everything you think he can be in that, or, or she in that moment, right? Like they just likely have not been to a number of births. They can't possibly bring to the room what we bring to the room. And so like the beauty of having a doula there is that your partner gets to be your partner and we get to bring the expertise to the room. We get to ask the questions that the partner doesn't even know to ask because he just thinks that everything that the care provider is doing must be in my partner's best interest. Um, red flag, maybe it's <laughs> yeah. not. Yeah. They are very separate roles and to ask your partner to play both really does rob them a little bit. It does. Yeah. And, and for my own husband, the one thing that still for him is a regret is that when I said, I just need to stand to push and the OB was like, that's a hard no. He wishes that he had just helped me stand up and just do my thing. But you know what? That's a way too high and hard expectation to have on him when even the midwife in the room wasn't advocating for that. She couldn't even support me in that. She was too scared. Can we talk about the point that you just made that other people in the room who are tasked with the job of standing up for you, advocating for you, being that buffer between you and your provider Sometimes there are inner hospital, inner unit workings that are going to prevent those people from doing that advocacy, from being that buffer, because they are scared. I think that brings up one of my other favorite things that we've come to learn. I was at a birth just two weeks ago and the nurse was like, I have never seen anybody push a baby out on their hands and knees. So it is very possible clients that your doula, probably very, very likely your doula has seen more unmedicated physiological birth than your nurse or your OB. So we are actually more well-versed in unmedicated physiological birth. How do we get to a point where nurses start to recognize also respect the difference in experience that we bring. We don't know what medications to push. That's not our job, but we do know that if you don't make them push on their backs, this pushing will probably be shorter. Well, and it's interesting when the nurses um, don't want you in the room. I think part of that is that they're used to working their 12 hour shifts. I don't know about where you are, but here we're at about a 6% rate of people hiring doulas. So they can easily work a month of shifts and never have a birth with a doula at it. All of a sudden we walk in, you, they know, oh, someone's standing there watching me. And if you say something or you say nothing, they know that every move that they're making, they're being watched. And I mean, I can imagine not loving that. I don't know that I would come into work at 7 p.m. ready to work the night with my coffee and be like, oh, oh great, a doula. Perfect. I've got someone just making <laughs> sure that I'm doing my best tonight. I don't think any doula goes in looking to scrutinize providers and nurses, but we do go in making sure that everyone's getting evidence-based care, compassionate care, consensual care. I go in soft front, hard back. So Definitely. I go in with, you know, 
gentleness, kindness. And then my back is I'm watching for what's coming. I always tell my team to go in with the mindset that everyone's a good nurse until proven otherwise, right? Mm -hmm. So you always go in thinking that this nurse is the best nurse, unless you have a history with that nurse. And if they have a proven track record, um, then that's a conversation to be having with your client to say, hey, listen, um, you know, this nurse may not respect what you're saying. And if at any moment you feel like you're not getting consensual care, like they're not being compassionate, like they're not respecting your wishes or what you're asking for, all you have to do is let me know. I used to walk in feeling like such an amateur and like I'm faking it. Now I'm finding myself in this scenario where I'm looking at some of these newer nurses and I'm like Laura said, like they've never seen a hands and knees birth. They've never seen a standing birth. They've never seen a water birth and, and they've never had kids themselves or they've just never been in any experience outside the hospital walls. How about the new nurses who are complete badasses? They're not even going to take your temperature, not even a temporal temperature, not even touching your body, just holding something up to your forehead without getting your permission. Yet you have Sally Joe over here. Who's been a nurse for 45 years. And she wants to taunt that around and say, I've been a nurse for 45 years. I don't need your permission. Yeah. To break your waters. Experience is not everything. It really isn't. I mean, and I think that's true across the board with providers, with nurses, with technical staff and with doulas. I think, you know, it is so much more about your actual practice, your philosophy on how you view client provider relationships um, and the respect that you have for, for your patients, not so much how long you've been doing it, Sally Jeff. A few weeks ago, I was at a birth and the OB was doing the whole like hand in the vagina. She had an epidural. So the OB was like, I don't actually know what she was doing because she didn't actually tell us what she was doing. I don't know if she was moving the cervix, but it got more aggressive. And my client is like body language, writhing in pain, writhing in pain. And then she starts like, you can see her husband's right with her. And she's saying like, ow, ow, ow to him. And I was like, is that too much? And she's like, yeah. And the OB stopped and was like, thank you for amplifying her voice. Like, oh my God, are things changing? Let's talk about that. And maybe this will be our last place, but can we talk about the facade that doulas represent in every doula knows how to advocate for me across the board when in reality, Ooh. the majority of trainings are not telling doulas that they are a buffer. The majority of trainings are not teaching doulas how to speak up. They're certainly not teaching them how to speak respectfully and in an educated manner to, you know, there's a way that you can present things and get your message across firmly soundly, yeah. respectfully. And then there's a way that you communicate that really does destroy all the work that you, your team or other doulas, our industry as a whole has made up until this point. And I think a lot of people are like, well, I hired a doula. So now I'm immune to birth trauma. And that's not yep. true. Who you hire matters. The way that that doula keeps up their certification and their continuing education matters. Mm. Doulas who sign up to work for that hospital, mm. they're not on your side, people. Uh, and I don't know if this is this the lens, if we had a different training or if it's the lens we listen through, but the, the, the interpretation I got, you know, you're, you're trying to envision this woman standing there speaking to you and you're trying to envision what this actually looks like in real time. And I kind of had this idea that she was just like fighting people left, right and center. Yeah. Like I, I got the impression that the whole job was advocacy. And I remember being so scared in my first five births. Well, like, and that's why I got that impression as well. Oh, okay. We weren't instructed on how to do it. Right. She, yeah. And she made it sound like she was just going to war. And yeah. then I was like, actually now and then I had her at my third birth and I was like I, I wonder and even how she replayed it yeah she was like yeah I told that midwife to sit on her hands and I'm like I don't actually remember hearing you say that no and you know I, what it's interesting because we've never had anybody ask us in an interview when they're hiring us like do you know how to advocate do you know how to protect me from trauma yeah no one's ever asking that in a doula interview and it's, it is wild. So yes, I agree with you. There are, there are doulas who can advocate and there are doulas who can't, but on the client end, they can't think that because they have checked that doula box that now they are yeah. void of that. They're not going to have trauma. Like 
I mean, and that they're going to magically have the exact birth they planned for yeah, just like, they hired a doula. Girl, you've got to still do the work. You've got to watch the videos. You've got to listen to the podcast. You've got to read the stuff. You've got to get your head in a space where, you know, birth is hard yeah. and this, you got to be ready for it. You can't expect to have all these beautiful things. If you think you're going to tap out in the first two hours, how many times have you been in a birth room where you're advocating for your patient, your client, and you're saying the things that they wanted you to advocate for. And then they just sit back and they're like, I'll just do what the doctor says. And you're like, good golly, Miss Molly, not only did you just give away your power, but you just threw me under the bus. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. So many times when I've had someone pushing in stirrups, I'm like, perhaps we could try a different position. <laughs> and they're like, oh, this is crickets, fine. crickets. All set. Like, okay, I'm going to suggest it one more time. And then my mouth's going to get shut. Like I can't flip you over myself. I think that's a great place to wrap up. So listeners, yeah. Um, if you're watching us on YouTube, be sure to catch us on Instagram. You can find us at Tranquility by Hehe or The Birth Lounge. If you're listening to our podcast, be sure to head over to YouTube. We're at Tranquility by Hehe there. But please know, please, please, please know when you advocate for yourself and your birth goals, you're not just doing it for you and your baby. You are doing it for the bigger collectiveness of women and birthers and birthing people and pregnant people and to collect collectively move that needle just a little bit it's it's bigger than you and we need you we need your power we need your voice we need your advocacy we need you to put into that bigger pot of hey we're done taking your abuse we're not going to stand up for this stuff anymore I am going to stand up and push my baby out I am going to get out of these stirrups I am going to stay in this birthing tub and if you are an OB you can get your hands down here and catch my baby where I'm at. Oh my goodness, Sarah, Laura, thanks so much for joining me. If people wanted to follow you on Instagram and they should because your reels are just French kiss <laughs> or chef's kiss, um, where do they find you? So they can find us at, at Dynamic Doulas on Instagram um, and everything's there. Our website's linked there and that's where we like to hang out a lot. All right, guys, thanks for joining us and we will see you next time. Bye, y'all. Thanks for joining us. I'll see you next time on the Birth Lounge Podcast. Until then, head over to Instagram and find us at Tranquility by Hehe and give us a follow. You can also check us out at thebirthlounge.com.